The presentation I will be doing today is about Two-Tone Records out of Coventry, England. Ska was brought to England by Jamaican immigrants in the 40s who were helping address Britain's post-war labour shortage. In the early 70s, the white ska skinhead movement gained popularity. These youths would listen to local reggae and records coming from Jamaica. After punk Britain was keen on finding the next new sound, the specials helped launch a new fusion of ska and rock featuring new sounds and styles. They created a record label called Two-Tone to help feature this new genre. Ironically, the skinheads were often racist. They would be more accepting of Jamaicans than many other immigrant cultures. The skinhead movement has very close ties with violent hooliganism. In the late 70s, London was a violent place with fascist and anti-fascist group fighting in the streets. This led to violence between the skinheads and the punks. Musically, the punks appreciated the speed of a lot of reggae. The punks and reggae artists joined forces for a series of concerts called Rock Against Racism. Jerry Dammers, of the specials founded Two-Tone Records in Coventry, England in 1979. The specials married punk to ska and featured both black and white members in the band. Gangstas was Two-Tone's first single by the specials. The band features a new look with a mix and match of clothes once worn by the skinheads, punks, and rude boys. The two-tone logo featuring Walt Jabsko was the image of a rude boy, not a Rastafarian. This style helped two-tone's popularity with a largely white working class audience. Two-tone records started to build other acts like Madness, The Selectors, and The Beat. All using the template of ska mixed with punk and crisp fashion styling. Two-tone records had a complicated relationship with racist skinheads. Their band Madness was an all-white band that had a strong following with the skinheads. All the bands of Two Tones, however, were very much against racism. The specials were so inclusive that they would regularly bring the audience up on stage to sing along with them. Two Tones' strengths were also its weaknesses. They built their popularity on impulsiveness and being unruly. In business, these qualities did not make them successful. Two Tones Records was established legally as 14 directors who were members of the specials and the selectors. That arrangement didn't work out due to conflicting opinions. The relationships inside the bands became fractured due to difficult road schedules and changing musical tastes. Most of the specials didn't like their second album, which Jerry Dammers incorporated with more synth. As the specials reached number one on the chart with their song Ghost Town in 1981, the band fell apart. Terry Hall, Neville Staple, and Linville Golding left the specials and Two Tone to form Fun Boy 3. They said that fighting in the band had made it too unenjoyable to continue with the specials. Two-Tone had a very unusual agreement with their bands allowing them to leave after recording just one single. By 1986, all of Two-Tone bands had either broken up or left for other labels. Two-Tone is still used today as an imprint for back catalog issues, though it is owned by Chrysalis Records. The legacy of Two Tone has influenced musicians over the decades since the label's closure. The mid 90s saw a boom in ska coming out from California. Rancid's song Time Bomb made reference to Walt Jabsko, who even makes an appearance. In the video. 
Gwen Stefani and No Doubt promoted two-tone bands like Madness and The Specials on the album Magic Kingdom. They even had The Specials lead singer Terry Hall in their Sunday morning video. Today, there are new ska bands gaining popularity. Groups like the Interrupters, Popes of Chili Town, Loin Groin, and the Resignators are taking influences from the two-tone sound and mixing them with other sound like hip-hop and UK dub to form exciting new sound. In conclusion, two-tone records stood not only for a sound, but most importantly, inclusiveness among all races and genders. They stood for these ideals at a time when there was violence in the streets. Having watched the world divided in recent years, I feel these fundamentals are as important to us today as when Two Tones was created.